Hey there, Nikki Does here with an update video to the update video to the uh, corrugated metal shower installation that we did around 2018. To be honest, I didn't even go back and watch the original video to see when we installed this, but um, we did two of them. And the other one is actually right behind this. Like there's a chase wall that's about two feet wide and then the other shower is right behind there. And we will be taking a look at this, at that other one. We're gonna pause this recording at some point and we'll go take a look at that one also. So you get a good idea. So 2018 to 2024, I think that's around six years. Um, this has been through two children. One of the children uh, moved out and went to school. The other child is just starting his junior year in high school. So, um, you know, I don't know. Uh, the shower, the features of the shower was meant to be super easy to install. And I've got something to mention about the floor that would have made that easier. But um, the surround of it was incredibly cheap because this corrugated steel roofing metal is from Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever home center you want to go to. But it's a very thin, I don't know, 24 gauge or something like that. Uh, corrugated galvanized steel and a lot of people so I, I did the install with no screws uh, to pierce it and I also um, did the install with uh, just silicone caulk so there's really nothing in here if you don't use caustic agents to clean it like basically acid or base uh, ammonium hydroxide sodium hydroxide um, muriatic acid something like that would take this galvanized coating right away but if you don't use that, this thing will last for a long, long time because it's frankly roofing material. So, you know, it's cheap and it should last forever. So um, let's just do kind of a, a really rough overview of where it is. And I'll try to narrate. I've had a lot of questions on this, uh, uh, comments on this series of videos. So let's just go through a little bit of what we did to put it up. And I'm going to start with some stuff that's uh, fairly obvious, but whatever. Um, we did this bow style uh, shower curtain rod, which is before I put this corrugated metal up, I made sure to put some two by four blocking behind here that I could screw into. So basically I screwed two by fours into the studs in the exact place where I knew I would want the shower rod so I wasn't having to anchor into, I don't know, drywall or something like that. Behind this shower, there is, um, I think if I remember right, I put up, uh, just a very rough version of the green board drywall. I think I just cut in basic green board, didn't tape it, didn't do anything fancy like that. Now, if we jump down to the floor, which is a penny tile floor, um, this was a little bit different size shower for uh, forced because of the dimensions of the entire basement renovation projects. So this couldn't be a five foot regular shower width. So I couldn't use a um, fiberglass shower pan or bath pan. So this was a, a poured floor with a, a membrane under the bottom, the, the um, rubber thick membrane and the drain and all that kind of stuff was done custom where it would have been a lot quicker and easier to take one of those, uh, I'd have forgot the name of them out off the top of my head, but one of those shower pans that you can just put in and that would have saved a lot of time down here. But I will discuss what I did down here because the cost of materials was really cheap. So, um, so we'll start at the bottom. Uh, this is uh, just a standard mortar floor, um, membrane first mortar floor. I put a drain in down here that I had roughed in. I knew which way the shower head would be pouring. So I wanted the, the um, slope to go toward the center. So it sloped toward the center. And then these are Home Depot penny tile sheets, which were really pretty cheap. Um, I made a curb out of some two by fours here and wrapped that and that's just normal and tiled that, which is normal. And then this gets a little interesting. So down here, this baseboard right here is a piece of PVC, which again, if you're a Home Depot person, which is the easiest one for me to go to, I have no loyalty to them, but um, these PVC boards, these are five quarter, which is kind of like inch and a quarter, but it's not because of weird American imperial measurements. But it's a one inch thick PVC board. It's not trim. You don't go in the trim section, you go in the actual board section. So here I uh, glued these to the outers and I didn't even miter the corner, if you notice, I just butted the corner up here. I mean, it was a quick and dirty shower, right? 
So I framed in this entire bottom, and of course, um, the shower is sloped, so you, the, the tops of these will slope too, and you have to be aware of that. So because the shower is pitched to, to my left here, to our left on the screen, you have to be aware of that too, or you're going to have a lot of caulk in here. So up behind this board is the shower membrane, which comes up to about six or eight inches up to here. So if water did leak in behind this between the seam of the corrugated metal and the PVC, the water just pours back there and basically returns back out. Not a big deal. So um, that's really what's going on behind here. I, I hope that's really clear. Membrane, uh, there's dry, that green board drywall. There's plenty of space here. We do have some silicone caulk, which is peeling out right here. Again, it's been six years. Um, but if water does get in there, it's not like it goes up the walls and all over the place. It just pours right back underneath here. So that's the bottom. And if you put that in, and if I remember right, now that I think about it, I actually pitched, I cut the angle of this five quarter trim board or, or board so that the top would be level all the way through. So I didn't have to fiddle around with this. So I, I think I ripped that at an angle. So it, it w I wouldn't have to mess around with angles on the bottom of this. Then it's a matter of some measurements because uh, this is the panels, if I recall, are 24 inches wide. So this is one width of panel that comes out to here. There's a lap seam right here, which is glued. And I use the PL uh, urethane glue. So the, I don't know, PL brand Loctite PL, I think it is. It comes in a caulk gun. And I laid down a bead right back here and probably another one like back here, because I overlap these at least three uh, corrugations. And the point though, is that you, you don't really have to cut the width of this stuff because um, this corner here and this corner here, there's a, a, an L-shaped flashing behind here. Also in the roofing section, it's an L-shaped flashing. So I glued in the L corner first. Over here, I glued in the L corner over here. Then I put this first sheet up to the left because I didn't want the shower water to spray into the groove. I wanted to, to drive, drive past it. L corner, glue on this, sorry, L corner, glue on this sheet first, then this sheet, and finally the left sheet. You just need to pay attention that uh, you leave enough space on either side so that you don't run this into the wall, right? So you, want, you have one corrugation, which is something like two and a half inches of pitch from peak here to peak here. So you're going to have to split that from left to right. So you do, before you start gluing, you wanna cut these things to length, put them in place and slide them left and right, get them where they want, where you want them. Then you, you can tack this one up with its glue, then you can tack this one up, and then you can tack this one up. So really you do this back wall, you have this big wide L flashing in here, big like three, four inches in here. So plenty of space for water not to get in there. You have the same thing up here on the on your left side, big wide flashing in here, super easy. So that really isn't difficult. Some of the difficult stuff happened when we put in for the faucet. And if you look, it's kind of wonky, it's a little hard. So when you mount the faucet, realize you have these corrugations. And if you look on top here, there's a foam chunk sitting right up in here. And this is also purchased at the same time you purchased this. They have these foam um, end seals in here. So what I did was to make out of PVC trim board, I actually PVC glued with the same glue that you use to glue PVC pipes in the plumbing section. I glued together whatever it is, three, three inch plus like another two and a half. There's a lap siding piece that you can buy at Home Depot. I glued this together to make it wider to fit this growy uh, faucet trim. And then I cut out the hole for the faucet trim to go over the top. And if you see, I had to put a little bit of a return on there too. If you see from the top, there's a bit of a return piece that I glued on. So this is fiddly to glue this together. I glued this, glued this, cut it, got it all kind of nice. Uh, I don't think I painted this at all, but there's just a bunch of little glued in pieces to make that work because the return had to fall back to fit the corrugation so that the high point was here. And I, you know, it would have looked weird if I would have extended this to the next high point. So I think that turned out pretty nice, but you know, it's kind of fiddly. There's also a foam in the bottom, um, just so that nothing can go up there, splashes and things like that. But the foam seems to work really perfectly. Um, the other side of this wall is actually a utility room, and I can see the back side of this faucet, and there's certainly no water damage or anything over here. 
So then if you, now this one I did really well. I did a nice decorative trim at the top. And if I recall, it was kind of fun. I glued this whole thing up with PVC cement in the workshop and brought this in as one big piece, including these little return stubs up here, all 45 mitered, um, put up here. And then you can barely see a hint of finish nails here where I shot finish nailer with a finish nailer, shot right through into the, con into the uh, two by fours. And then I caulk the top. And again, and here is the uh, foam strips. So just kind of more decorative than the others. Uh, there's a nail pop in here from something I don't know exactly what, but you know, that was it. So really, and then we built this shelf, which is also that same base uh, PVC lumber that I've talked about a bunch. I glued two sheets of that together. I got some Simpson strong tie, uh, 45 degree angle clamps out of the, uh, area where you buy, um, the joist hangers and all that kind of, uh, framing equipment, framing materials. And I screwed that under here with three of those shelves and that's worked out perfectly too. It's got a little fascia on it with a lip. So your stuff doesn't just fall right off. Uh, yet water can pour behind through the corrugation. So right through here, I can stick my finger and water can pour right out. It looks really good. I mean, it doesn't look like it's wearing at all. And they, um, you know, these are teens who are living in this, so they're not exactly taking perfect care, but they've done a great job with it. Uh, this, I think I just gooped with silicone up around the, the um, escutcheon here for the shower head and didn't really worry about that. Uh, as always, you've got to do a lot of blocking to make sure all your faucet valves and stuff are firm and solid so that they're not floating around. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, that comes right off when you turn it. So, yeah, you've got to do blocking behind this so your faucet valves are firm if you want your stuff to last. That's a huge part of it. And, uh, yeah, that's it. So we're going to pause this video for a second. We'll go over and take a look at the other shower, too. Kapow! Now we're in the second shower. And the story is really the same, except being honest, I really didn't finish this one. So um, uh, the daughter who was in this one has already gone on to college. Yay. Uh, she's doing great. So uh, this has been 2018 to this year, 2024. She just started in university. So let's take a look at hers. The big thing, the bottom is the same. Same construction throughout, but you can see the caulk is falling out here, and I have not replaced that. Um, same strategy to get the walls up. There's a little bit of, uh, I forgot what they call that. There's a word for this, uh, like it blooming, it may be the right word for that, where it, uh, it blooms a little bit, but a little bit of blooming, but it's, you know, for people who like this sort of thing, it's a little bit of patina that you'd probably be okay with. Um, same exact strategy to get the shower handle in here. Same exact gooping up, up here. Uh, water doesn't really get up there anyway, so it's not a big deal. This one, by the way, we can't see the back of. This one we don't, uh, the back wall is drywalled shut. So if this one leaks, we wouldn't know about it until it's catastrophic. Same construction on the bottom, exactly. Uh, same five quarter PVC lumber, if you will, from uh, Home Depot. Uh, same way to center, left and right. It looks like I gooped this up with silicone, which I don't exactly know why I did that, but I did. Probably didn't need to do that. Same shelf, only a little lower, again, not precisely sure why I put a lower shelf in there. Um, I think she liked a little uh, loofah sponge or something here, so she worked a hook in there herself, which is awesome. Uh, same bow shower curtain rod. And if you notice though at the top, I did not finish the trim piece up here. That's the one thing I didn't do on this one. So uh, this is a little loose. I don't know what happened there, but the glue isn't stuck all the way. I, if, I, if I wanted to keep this, I would probably just peel this back a little, squirt in some PL urethane adhesive in there, and press this back in. Put some tape, painter's tape right here to hold it while it dries. Nice thick dollops. It was like squirt, big dollop, squirt, big dollop. They are not um, continuous lines. They're just big lumpy chunks so that they're, they adhere in individual places. Um, this one is probably going to be torn out, and this is this one is sized. This one could be sized for a uh, deep soaker tub, for like a five foot by thirty six inch soaker tub. So that's what when we built this, 
I had the five foot width and I had the depth in this bathroom where I could move the toilet far enough away that I could put a soaker tub in here. So this one probably is going to get torn out and replaced with a soaker tub. Um, I hope this is a clear video for everybody. I know it's not a, an in-process video. It's just talking hands and mouth. But um, if you have questions on it, I would be happy to share whatever I can with you. And I wish you the best of luck making your own galvanized metal corrugated shower. Thanks for watching.